we like to call it the supernatural hour. And now, our hosts. You are listening to the Supernatural Hour. I'm Tim. I'm Raven with a Y. Jeff. Or Chad. Lurch. Let's get into our topic this week. I believe Lurch picked this topic. Did I? I don't know. Maybe I don't the think end. that I did. I thought you did. I That's all right. Someone it's cool. It's topic. a great topic. It's it's. Uh, I don't speak Spanish, so I'm gonna. I, I'm not gonna pronounce it in the uh, Spanish pronunciation. Hey, I was gonna say la, that very exact same thing. La Isla <laughs> de las Muñecas. Yay, Lurch! That sounds Isla awesome. De la, de la I can Muñecas. say Chimichanga. The I island of the dolls. The <laughs> island of the dolls. And some some websites they, they called it the island of the dead dolls. Ooh. Ho Chi Milko. Uh, is that the name of the city? Ho Chi Milko. I, 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 didn't, so, yeah. I didn't even write that down because I was it's, like, it starts with an X. H O X O C H. If it's Spanish, I, I think that's it. I think that's how you say X. it. Ho Chi Milko. Something like that. That sounds that sounds about right. South of Mexico City. South of Mexico City. Now this place is actually about. You have to take a boat, and um, you, there's the, I guess there's three ports in this city, and you have to take the right one. And you can find the right one just by watching YouTube clips of it, because there's like four dudes that are just like, this is the right port to go to. And they show you the really cool, colorful boats. Um, I don't know how to pronounce those either, because I don't speak a lick of Spanish. Um, uh, let me find it here one second. But it's there uh, is this... Uh, they're really colorful, cool-looking boats, and... Um, if you pay the right price, uh, you can have someone take you to the Island of the Dolls. It's about yeah. an hour and a half to two hours south of this city. And all these boats are not going to the Island of the Dolls. Via Trajinera. Trajinera. Yes. So, yeah, they, I mean, they're really cool looking. They're, they're, they've got them all decorated in, in bright, beautiful colors. It's like a rowboat. But no. they, they use this big, long stick. They, they put it in like the... Like a gondola. Yeah. In yeah. Venice. And like they, they push themselves down these, these uh, canals. Now, one thing I want to point out, you said it was an island, and I read a couple different websites that said that it was actually a man-made island, and they called them floating gardens. It's very so, possible. I don't there, know there, there's several is, There's several islands in that area. There's several canals. Now, I know uh, in one of the... I think it was Ghost Adventures I was actually watching. Uh, go figure. It's... I, I don't like their investigations part because a lot of that's fabricated. But the history yes. that they give beforehand is, fabulous. is yeah. fairly accurate. And they give a lot more history than some of these other YouTube uh, shows of people just going to the island. But um, now they claim that this is the most haunted place in all of Mexico. And well, everywhere they go is the most haunted place in whatever part. Well, just of the not not just ghost adventures, but like everybody, oh, like okay. even even in Mexico, they, they this is the most haunted place in Mexico. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, there's people that they're afraid of this place. They, they feel like it's got a curse on it. Mm-hmm. And well, I saw some of the pictures of this place in the dark, and I'm scared of it. And in the dark, yes. There. But all the videos I saw was in the daytime. And honestly, like I was asking uh, Chad here before we started, like, did you? I asked everybody, did you watch videos, and what what did you feel about this? And then I just kind of cut him off and I said, just think about it. So, what did what did you feel like? What did you think about when you were watching these this video? It, it was kind of creepy because just the idea of the dolls. Then they've been there for. Some of them up to like seventy years. They, the, the the started in the nineteen fifties, and so some of those dolls have been there. But just the the feel and you know that idea of, you know, dolls and human replica kinds of things. You and know, you know, you're being watched. It kind of gives you a creepy feel. A lot of people get creeped out by dolls. I don't really, especially. But I think in a situation like that where. You know, you, you're just surrounded by a bunch of dolls everywhere you look. I think that would be a little bit unnerving. Well, and you know, if you've studied, um, you know, the we call them the type threes, but the demonic entities at all. If they're going to go into a um, into a, an item, one of the things they pick is masks because it's a human representation, and that's also why dolls tend to be a little bit more Annabelle. Yeah, like Annabelle. A little bit more um, likely to be possessed by an entity is because they want that human form, and so the fact that there's, I think it said there was over 1,500 dolls there as of 2013. Um, you know, you've got 1,500 dolls. You know, you've got 1,500 evil spirits there, and you've got technically, you've right. got a possibility of like possibility. interaction. Right. You know, you've got a possibility of people like you know. Um, I, I can't think of the word, but uh, interacting with with like the dolls, like you know, just like a, a child would, you know. I does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Absolutely. I felt nothing. Like I was just watching it, and I'm like, cool. There's this island with dolls on it. 
I might feel a little bit different if I was actually physically there, but just watching some of the videos, I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel like it was something I'd be afraid of. I didn't. I mean, it's fascinating as to why it's all there. Like I said, back in 1950, there was a gentleman named uh, Don Julian uh, Santana, and like Julian Santana Barrera. Yes, Barrera. I can't. I can't do the. Um, he was either he was heartbroken or something like that. I, uh, had a problem with his wife. He ended up leaving his wife and kids and moved to this secluded island by himself because yeah, so he just wanted to get away from things. He was kind of the caretaker of the island from what I understood. How big was this island? I mean, how big is it approximately? Do you, do you have an idea? Watching, it's not very it big. It's like not it's very big. big at all. Yeah, I mean, it's just a small little piece of land in the middle of a, a, a river somewhere in Mexico. But yeah, uh, Julian was the kind of the caretaker of the island and, uh, you know, do you want to talk about the history or do you want oh, me no, to just kind of keep going? In? I'm just kind of like throwing stuff out there and letting you guys pick up. So what happened was, uh, I, I guess a girl, um, it was, it was owned by Julian, uh, and, uh, a girl drowned in the river close by a young woman drowned. Uh, she was entangled among the lilies of the canal and her body was found on the banks. Uh, so he began to exp- experience, uh, weird situations and, uh, a couple days later, I guess he found the doll in the the canal a little bit further down from where he found her body. So he assumed that she had drowned trying to uh, to rescue her doll. So um, that's kind of where that's that's kind of the foundation for the I guess the hauntings that that happened on the island. Do you, yeah. do you he, know a little more about that? So he guess? he took the doll and kind of as a homage to this little girl, he just kind of hung it in a tree. But then he said he started to feel like the doll was, or not the doll, but the spirit of the little girl was haunting him. And so he kept getting more and more dolls and putting them around, trying to make her happy. Um, and so that's kind of where that started. Yeah, apparently he would, uh, uh, he, he hung up the, the, the doll in a, a nearby tree, um, assuming it belonged to the deceased girl, hung it from the tree as a sign of respect. Um, after this, he began to hear whispers, footsteps in the darkness, even the, even through his hut, which was hidden deep in the woods of Hochimilco. Hochimilco. Hidden deep in the woods. So he's out there in the middle of nowhere, and he's starting to hear like these sounds of, of footsteps and whispers. Uh, I want my doll, I guess, is something that he would hear uh, a young woman cry out, I want my doll. So he would start to gather other dolls and just start putting them tree, in, in trees. And at first, I think he... He meant it more to like scare the girl to keep her away, but then after a while, it became more of like a sign of respect, a, a sign of way, a, a way for her to, to kind of I guess feel more welcome. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it could be the other way around too. Like the original one was, uh, from what I read, was he put it up kind of like a tribute to the girl, and then and because then he, he, <laughs> he heard all the stuff, he's like, okay, crap. And now I want you to go away. And I mean, he did this for fifty years. Wow. Like he, uh, I think he finally passed away in two thousand one. And the interesting thing is, they found his body in the same place where he found the girl's body. Yeah, fifty years before. But the, the thing is, uh, a lot of people, even his family, they think that he made the whole thing up. Um, they don't know. They they're not one hundred percent sure if he actually legitimately found a body in in the water. Uh, they don't know if the even in Discovery Channel um, or one of the websites I was looking at, um, they hint to mental instability. Yeah, was a body ever buried? I mean, was there any ever? There, ever there's any like no paperwork? evidence of no this evidence girl at all. at all. Yeah, there's. I mean, no one has come forth to say we had a, you know, a, a missing, child missing yeah. or. I mean, that's kind of like you said. It's it's out of the way. Like even modern day times now like you're still like it's you're taking a boat and it's about a two hour boat ride wow from the that city so i mean it's it's not you know likely you that wander off into the woods and get lost accidentally so if there was actually a little girl that he found it was likelihood that the big the best likelihood is she was murdered because someone would have had to have taken her there i mean yeah that's that seems very so plausible i mean it was the the area in general was just kind of had a lot of negative energy to begin with because mm-hmm. the area that city there was actually uh, a spot where they had the mexican revolution back in 1911 and there was a lot of people that were killed during that that war and their bodies were basically just thrown into the canal 
And then, I mean, they could have flooded anywhere. They could have flooded that island at all. So if you have, I mean, that city, like the canals are basically just a large burial ground, more or less. And I think at one point, uh, they said they went through and they were actually cleaning up the canals and just tons and tons of skeletons wow. were like coming up. So, I mean, the whole area, just just that vibe alone right there would creep me out. The fact that you're going down this, these canals, these rivers, that were once used as a place to bury their dead from their war. Well, I, I, from what I understand, too, Mexico City is one of the largest cities in the world. If not, I, it might actually be the largest city in the world. But uh, there is there is a lot of violent crimes that happen out there, too. A lot of people get killed. Um, you know, I think about stuff like that every time I drive into Las Vegas, even. Like, how many people are out, buried in the desert in shallow unmarked graves but I, I can imagine the same thing happening out there in mexico city with with mafias and gangs and you know just take them out into the the swamps and the woods and and bury them in a, a shallow grave yeah. so i'm not surprised to hear about the uh the canals being dredged and raked and and finding all the skeletons all right well and it's funny when i first did my um you know sat down and pulled up research for it you know where, where tim you said that um when you watch the videos at first, you didn't feel anything. One of the first things I pulled up, you know, and I'm looking at Google, it's like TripAdvisor. And I'm like, okay, fine, TripAdvisor. Let's go see what's there. They had two comments. And the first one was about what you'd expect it to be. It said, certainly Isla de la Muertas, or the Dolls Island, makes a crazy impression on anyone who experiences a closer look. Even the photos from this place seem to move or sometimes hypnotize. I'm like, okay, this is good. And then I read the second one. The second trip advisor said, the boats are covered and have a table and chairs. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, well, we had two different experiences. There. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, you know, it is kind of creepy. They say that people see the doll's eyes open and close and that, um, you know, the arms move and they hear whispers mm -hmm. and they see shadows. I mean, apparently there is a lot of activity with these dolls. Okay, now that's something I want to know more about because I know that Ghost Adventures went there. Uh, did did any other, like, docking, I guess, film crews or whatever go there to, there, to there was one that I was kind of exp you know, any I think Discovery Channel had some people there. There was one I was trying to watch where they, they actually claimed they had an EVP on it, but I couldn't get it to load. Yeah. Um, I'll have to go back and watch that, but... Um, there's there's several stories like you said. There's the people that be in that the guy's hut and and it's what was interesting in the hut. Um, I don't know if it was the original doll, but there was the the guy's uh, he had a, he had a favorite doll, and it was the only one out of the these thousands of dolls that were on this island. It's the yeah. only one he gave a name to. Yeah. And there was like a little shrine built around it, and there was oh, like I a saw that one. there was a little bowl in front of it that had like offerings, like it was full of money and like other pictures of dolls and stuff. And yeah, this dude just like dedicated fifty years of his life, right? It's just building this m island of dolls. I should have watched that episode again before you know doing the podcast because I it's been a while since I've uh, seen it, but I. I mean, it's. I, I take Ghost Adventures with a grain of salt now because I know that a lot of their uh, their evidence is fabricated, but uh, it's it's still good kind of seeing what what results they get. And if you're watching that episode on YouTube, the person that uploaded it, um, the pictures like flipped and the audio quality gets really bad really quick, and that might be due to copyright reasons or whatever. But um, it's still kind of a fascinating episode to watch. Especially, like, one of the guys that they interviewed was actually friends with Don uh, Julian. And a lot of the stories that he heard came right from the horse's mouth, so to nice. speak. Oh, that's cool. um, but, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's, it's somewhere that if I had the time and money to go do, I would. Just so I can experience it myself. But just from watching the videos and looking at some of the pictures, I, I, I just, I don't. I don't know that it's haunted. I, it, I think it's just everyone's... I think it could be a massive case of pareidolia, and I hope yeah. I'm wrong. Well, I think, you know, the, the idea of having this mystical, mythical kind of island out in the middle of the woods and the swamps in Mexico that has all these dolls and this, uh, you know, great story behind it and, and a great, you know, this, this mythology behind it. I think people tend to come to their own conclusions and think you know that's just going to add to the whole 
fantasy, the whole the the, the story of, of the island. You know, let's let's make it haunted too. Right. I can swear there's things that happen at night, and I, I hear footsteps and I hear sounds and you know strange disembodied voices and stuff. And whether it's real or not, it just adds to the whole uh, uh, mystique. Mystique, yeah, the whole attraction of uh, of the place. So, um, people that knew Julian, and I don't know if it's the same person, uh, Beaker, that you were that you had watched the video on, but they said that they could actually see a change in um, Don Julian, Julian. Um, they said it was almost like there was an unseen force that was driving him to do this. And so even if it's not haunted and it was just him with his own mental illness, I think there's there's definitely got to be, because with either, either if his story is true or if he just had mental illness, either mm-hmm. way, there was going to be some energy there. Uh, yeah. That's maybe you know negative or I don't know what the word is overwhelmed or you know something that there's there's probably a different energy there than maybe your average island in the middle of a canal. Yeah, you're. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think dolls do kind of bring a little bit of uh, a weird vibe to the the place. But uh, I agree with you on that, Beaker. It's one of those places that uh, I would be interested in in checking out if I had the time, the money traveling there spending you know a few days literally camp out i've never i've never slept overnight at an investigation and done a multiple day uh, investigation but that would be the type of place that i'd walk into with a a healthy sort of skepticism and and kind of feel like you know maybe there's a possibility it's not really haunted maybe it's just part of the the attraction of it all and uh, really try to find some evidence if uh, if it was or not. Uh, yeah, I would love to find actual evidence yeah. and, and share it with everybody. Oh, yeah. But it just right now, just from the little bit that I saw, looking at the picture of the guy, I, I just, I don't, I don't see it. Um, and like I said, I, I hope I'm wrong. Um, I don't want to, like, burst anybody's bubbles and, like, you know, like, I've, I've never physically been there myself, so I don't know for sure. You were the um, guy that put the stuff that the boats had chairs and tables, huh? Yeah, I've never left the country, but yes, I, I did like the, uh, the the chairs and tables on the boats. But you know, there's there's creepy places all around the world that we can't quite put a finger on why it is, and it's just been kind of almost cultivated to be that way. Uh, but I think stuff like that just adds to the whole allure of it. Like if if you say, oh, it's haunted, it, just, it adds another level of, of mystery to it. Well, just, like you know, there's there's a suicide woods in in Japan where people go and commit suicide. And I know that in Atlanta, Georgia, there's also a, a trail, a hiking trail that has doll heads along it, just like that. And I've never been there personally, but I've got friends that have have hiked that trail, and it's it's very eerie. It's very offsetting to see these doll heads all around this this trail in the middle of the woods. But uh, it just it adds to the whole mystery. Yeah. And, and one thing about the dolls here is they're not all just dolls. A lot of them are dismembered. There's one of a. a doll head with another doll head in its mouth and there's just random arm. I mean there are several that are just you know the whole doll um, but there are also several especially the older ones that, that Don Julian put up that are um, you know body doll parts. Yeah in fact it's called the doll's head trail in Atlanta Georgia. It's uh, the Constitution Lakes Park in Atlanta um, doll's head trail um, I've never been there myself. I lived there for uh, for five years. I, I kind of regret that I, I never went. But uh, I've seen, I'm looking at a couple pictures online. Just Google Doll's Head Trail, Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, there's just weird, creepy, uh, you know, the old ceramic doll heads just all around the, the woods. There's some that are done artistically, placed in like an old uh, TV case, you know, like they took the tube out and just left the TV and they put doll head inside of that and and stuck in trees and all over the place but you know it just i think stuff like that it may not necessarily be haunted but it's just it it started as just kind of a maybe an art project or just someone doing something weird and odd and then it kind of caught on and and other people started doing the same thing too but when you get stuff like that going on I'm, i i i tend to doubt the the paranormal factor involved like it's it's just it's just dolls it's just doll heads you know is is that going to really bring in ghosts and 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 negative energy into a, a place just because there's dolls around i mean the way i look at it i i don't think it would in, in my yeah, opinion yeah exactly and and the way i look at it is you have this dude 
that left his family in the 50s, in 1950, and moved to some remote island by himself. Now, if you've ever watched any TV show that has to deal with prison or like Swiss Family Robinson, where you're marooned, even um, Castaway with Tom Hanks, you're on an island by yourself. Your mind's going to go places it probably shouldn't go. I mean, he uh, in... in uh, Castaway, he his best friend was a volleyball named Wilson that had his bloody handprint on it. Yeah, your your yep. mind is is going to do things like that isolation. There's there's a reason why they have solitary confinement in prisons. It's to mess with people's heads. Mm-hmm. And so when you've purposely uh, confined yourself to this solitary state for put yourself in that fifty position. years, yeah, you're gonna your your mind's gonna go and it's probably gonna erode and go to places that it would never normally go in uh normal situations and now i'm the more i think about it too the the more i believe that maybe mental illness might have been at play when the the island first started to get covered with dolls right now i'm going to play devil's advocate here for just a second and i agree the more I kind of read into it, the more... And I, and I wanted it to be haunted. I mean, you know, from, from the little girl. Mm-hmm. But the more I read, I thought, oh, I think he was just yeah. a little crazy. However, that being said, I'm going to go back to what I said a few minutes ago. Um, I do think there's a possibility that you, you get some of these demonic entities going around and going, ooh, hey, here's a bunch of dolls, and then there's a bunch of people. I'm going to go inhabit this doll, because that's mm-hmm. the closest to a body I'm going to get, and I'm going to see if I can entice one of these visitors to take me home or somehow I can get attached to. So I wouldn't put it past that there might be a little bit of that going on somewhere. And I'm not saying every doll. I'm not saying there's 1,500 evil spirits in in every doll, but it would not surprise me. Two or three or a handful. But but there have been reports of people that had taken the dolls and sent them back. And also true. because things were, you know, I did things not went. Read about that one. Yeah, I did hear that. They they would have uh, strokes of bad luck, or they oh, felt really? like something followed them home, huh. so they would mail the doll back to the island. And I was thinking the the opposite works as well. When you got these people that are fascinated with the occult and with you know paranormal that hear about this place, are they bringing it? And to they the bring island? bring it to the island. You know, maybe they have something that's been following them. Maybe they they dabbled with. Uh, the occult and with Ouija boards, and they've they're fascinated by this, so they want to go check it out. But they've got you know dark stuff following them as well. So it could have been brought there by other people, by tourists. There could definitely well be, like Deanne said, you know, there could be uh, that they decided, hey, it's it's a doll, it's a way to to kind of inhabit as close to a, a human body as I'll ever be able to to have, and maybe I can manipulate the uh, the doll to to get someone to notice me. Uh, blink my eye or move my arm and and make people think there that, are yeah there are things of of the dolls moving yeah and, well I mean, our reports. last group trip was <coughs> rollins wyoming five years ago maybe we need to go Stanley to Hotel. mexico City. have we talked about that for rollins five years ago that was a joke because that was like what we talked about for the first half hour never mind <laughs> um, but go ahead. yeah go ahead they can't all be gems so what were we saying <laughs> No, I was just saying, Mexico City isn't really that far from us, actually. We should we should go. Mexico City? Isn't that far? Well, it's, cl- it's closer than Paris. Thanks for listening, everybody. Au revoir. That's so sort of Raven. Adios. You've been listening to The Supernatural Hour at AdvancedParanormal.com. The Supernatural Hour is part of the Radio Ronin Network, found at RadioRonin.com. Copyright by Advanced Paranormal Services.